it's not like it's hard to play, but it's a little, um, a little frightening. <laughs> So a few days ago I was on Instagram and one of my local guitar shops here in Atlanta, Maple Street Guitars, posted this. And this is really exciting. This is a guitar I've wanted to check out for a long time and I've never actually really had an opportunity to. This is the Collings 470 JL, the Julian Lodge model, which is based off of his vintage Gretsch uh, duo jet. And these guitars are highly sought after. In fact, this is the first one that Maple Street's gotten in that has not been pre-sold. Uh, and from everything I've heard about them, they're amazing. Uh, I should point out this video is not sponsored in any way by Collings or Maple Street. I don't know anyone from Collings and Maple Street didn't ask me to do this. They actually don't even know we're coming down today. This is just because I wanted to go check this guitar out. So we're gonna pack the camera up and head down to Maple Street. Oh. There he is. What's up, man? Okay, so I heard you guys have the, the Julian Lodge in. We do. You know, the the uh, elusive unicorn of Collings. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first one that's actually hung on our wall in three and almost four years. So if that speaks to its uh, demand, or the, I should say the demand for the guitar. Yeah, I want to check it out. Yeah, let's go. Oh, there it is in the is. thou shalt not oh, touch cool. zone. <laughs> <laughs> we please ask for assistance zone. Yes. But, um, I mean, just a gorgeous guitar in every respect. And, you know, what, what Collings does, of course, is they, you know, they age them, quote unquote age them, but it's not like any relic you're going to see out there. It's, it's, again, just very tastefully. So they kind of brush the finish. You'll see a lot of swirls in here, brush the hardware. Uh, they, of course, do the cool old Collings logo, which you would actually find on an older guitar that maybe Bill made. Um, you know, kind of relic Waverly tuners. Aesthetically, you know, just really gorgeous. Great physical balance. It's a trestle-braced guitar, so very Gretsch-like. You have essentially a, a brace that looks a lot like a train trestle. While it looks solid body, it's most definitely not. And, of course, the LS pickups, which... Um, I think prior to this guitar, there was just no production guitar that had an LS pickup in it. Yeah. You know, it's like, unless you were, uh, you know, somebody, they are extremely expressive. So, uh, nylon saddle, so, you know, it gives a slightly smoother response on the string acoustically. Again, yeah, very faithful to Gretsch designs, that trestle bracing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, obviously with a Collings refinement built in, so... You should give it a try, man. Okay. You don't have to tell me <laughs> twice. <laughs> That's pretty unreal. There's so much expressiveness just when you're playing quietly, and that I think is really where the magic is. Yeah, it's it's like almost uh, 
It's like piano esque. Yeah. first that I've heard play that guitar sounds like them. It sounds like a totally different guitar with every different person whose hands are on there and that's a really good you know to me a player's guitar is one that's going to amplify you and kind of minimize the the friction from from here to here. I uh I went here with some some drive. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think this is the most articulate guitar I've ever played. It's almost, I don't want to, it's not like it's hard to play, but it's a little, um, it's a little frightening almost because it's so, like everything that you put into it, it's give all, like good and bad. Yeah. Which on a good day is amazing. <laughs> on a bad day, it's, it's kind of scary, but like even unplugged, man, it's just, I think too what's cool is when you play a lot of vintage guitars, the, the thing that I've learned at least is that not all vintage guitars are good, but mm -hmm. in fact, most of them, in my experience, are less than good, but when they are really good, there's something that is not, that's just different about them. And this doesn't feel like a vintage guitar to me, but it has this, I, I don't know, it's just special. It's got that same kind of like thing that you get when you play a really great old Les Paul or old Telly, like when it's good, it has this that this articulation that comes through that is hard to get with a lot of guitars. And this is, I think, probably one of, if not the only new guitars I've played that has that like just fidelity. I think that's the way I would, I would describe it. It's yeah. super hi-fi. Oh yeah, it'll do just about anything you put into it. I think that's what I was curious about. Was like, is this just? Is this a jazz guitar? Is it a jazz box? Is it fully hollow and everything? But because it's handling the volume okay, I mean, I'm playing pretty mm -hmm. loud through this. Yeah, it does have a laminate top, okay. which is kind of unusual. Yeah. Usually, you know, it's it's all of it's laminate to help cut back on feedback, or all of it's carved and solid to get that real rich, you know, complex sort of sound. So this has a laminate top with the solid back and sides, yeah. which is pretty unusual. Pretty cool. This is I, this is legitimately one of the best guitars I've I've played. I thought. It was a little bit hyped because you hear people talk about these things, but this is, yeah, this is on another level, man. Are these like true recreations of Dynasonics or are they kind of like a tweaked? I think they're probably slightly tweaked. Typically I associate Dynasonics with having the adjustable pole pieces and yeah. stuff on there, whereas those are all just kind of preset. Um, but we do have some other guitars with Dynasonic style yeah, pickups on there, including another Collings, actually. Yeah, that'd be cool. uh, we have a 360. 360 LTM, which is an offset style. To me, it's always been kind of a cross between like a Jazzmaster meets a Firebird. Cool. Um, closer to the Gibson scale length, 24 and 7 eighths. Um, but you got your kind of typical mastery things going yeah, on right. in the jazz master experience. So this one had been retrofit with the uh, sort of set of TV Jones T Armand Dynasonic style pickups.
Yeah, it's cool. It's like, um, it's bright and it's articulate, but it's not the same thing as, as that. <laughs> sort of thing there's been so much hype around it as you mentioned you know like this is the first one we have that wasn't pre-sold months in advance right and uh, you know it's it's been exciting to see so much enthusiasm for it well, that's why I wanted to check it out because there's so much hype around these things mm -hmm. and I you know a lot of times especially with signature models they're cool yeah but it's like that guitarist or that artist's vision of their instrument mm -hmm. so a lot of times it's kind of hard to at least for me to connect with some signature guitars, but everyone, and I know a few people that own these and people just sing their praises. It is like a piano. Like that's the, the we were talking about a second ago off camera, like that's, mm -hmm. Chris, you were saying that it, you can play it anywhere like a piano and it's balanced and even, and it comes through. It's, yeah. you can hear every note, even on super dense, tight chords, everything's ringing through. That's a special guitar. That's kind of amazing how much of that is the Collings experience too. You know, a lot of that comes through with their acoustic guitars as well. Yeah. Most folks know them for the acoustics, not necessarily as much for the electrics, and the electrics are just as good. Yeah, man. I don't actually don't have a lot of experience with Collings. I've never owned one. I haven't played a whole lot of them. Um, it's, damn. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. I think, uh, I think we got it. <laughs> 